Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. oh my gosh, that's a giant. That's a giant. Stay on there. Oh, yeah! That's the way this time of morning. Yes. Record breaking tournaments. We just were still panting after covering one of the greatest tournaments of all time on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Uh, the seventh stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. It's a St. Lawrence River and adjacent Lake Ontario. And of course, it's a great fishery that everyone looks for. I mean, they, they would go tournament or not, everyone would jump at a chance to go up there. But when you get a great fishery like that, that it, with completely atypical weather conditions, perfect flat calm for each of four days. You expect something big to happen and multiple big things happen. And really, Tommy, coming into this event, we thought 90 plus pounds. That's exactly what it takes every time we come here. 90, 95, 97, depending on how high they can go big bag wise. We said it's going to be in the 90 pound range. That's not going to be a letdown. The expectations are set there. But boy, did they blow it out of the water. We saw our first ever all smallmouth century club. I don't know what the championship, you know, century club belt's going to look like. All the other ones are silver. Maybe we make this one bronze, bronze just to sure. represent smallmouth. But Jay Shakurit, 102 plus pounds. Corey Johnston broke 100 pounds on that final day. His last catch got him to that mark. What an incredible week. But that's the that's the overarching statistic that breaks history and all the records is man, 100 pounds. We were wondering. Yes. We've been here eight times now for the Bassmaster Elite oh, Series, and every time it's kind of like tease. When are we going to do it? When are we going to do it? And this year, Tommy, I'll be honest, I went into the tournament saying, once again, no shot of doing it. A media postpone for these fish, not going to be the deal. But those conditions you mentioned made it happen. Yeah, and Jay Shakurit was, uh, when he made his 100 pounds, when he made, reached the century mark, he was not done with setting his records. His win set another important record. Yes, he's the youngest Elite Series champion in history. That record had been set in 2007 and held since there. It was actually broke twice in 2007. Set by Derek Rimmitz, broke by Casey Ashley, and it has lasted over 15 years. But Jay Shakurit, 23 years, and 26 days old, broke it by about four months. He is now the youngest. It's hard to be 23 year old in the Bassmaster Elite Series and get your start, but then also to get a win. Normally guys are qualifying right after college. They're 23, 24, 25. They're still very young. Patrick Walters is fourth or fifth on that list when he won his elite title at Fork and he was 26. So that shows you can be a young gun, but you can't be as young as Jay Shakira was this week, 23 years old. Well, that was going to be hard to top going forward. I think we can all <laughs> agree on that. Universal limit. That's something that hasn't, it's not a record, but it's it's not happened in a long, long time. Yeah, the second time in Elite Series history for a four-day full field event. You know, some of those AOI championships where there's only 50 anglers in three days, we may have gotten limits every day, but for a full field event, four-day competition, perfection. 100% limits, 237 possible limits, 237 confirmed limits. What a, We were worried on the final day. Bob Downey had some mechanical issues. He only had four for the longest time. He caught his fifth one on Bassmaster Live and we all said, ah, perfection. That's hard to achieve because something always happens and you know this time, you've been in the game a long time. You can lose plenty of fish. You can have mechanical issues. You can share spots with others. There's something that causes at least one angler to not get five fish. Not the case this week. All right. When you catch the second biggest uh, smallmouth bag in Bassmaster history, you would expect to win, wouldn't you? Corey Johnston did that on the final day. Yeah, 28 8 for Corey Johnston. Another record set because that is the biggest five fish limit of all smallmouth in Elite Series history, but it's not the biggest in bass history. We have to go back to 1998 at Pickwick Lake. Chuck Economo, 29 pounds and an ounce from Pickwick. Who would have thought that Pickwick holds the record for perfection on limits? That was in 2010 for the Elite there, and it also holds the record from 1998 for the biggest five fish limit of smallmouth. So Corey Johnston broke the elite one, which was set this week by Jacob Fouts. Jacob, sorry, you got to hold the record for three days. You had 27-15 on day one. That's the biggest elite series smallmouth bag. Just Big. three days later on day four, Corey Johnston breaks it there. What an incredible record that is. And also, Tommy, another, it's not a record, but this is just an amazing stat. 160 bags over 20 pounds out of a possible 237. I don't know what the percentage is off the top of my head, but that is well over 50%. That's in two thirds territory of the week. 160 out of 237 all broke 20 pounds. Only, only thing that beats it is like Falcon and comparing like exactly. Falcon leg with giant large mouth is really not a, a good comparing a, a yardstick. The only thing that is similar about the St. Lawrence River and Lake Ontario and Falcon is that they're both border lakes. They both split the United States and another country. What an incredible 
comparison to compare those two. I even did the top 10 leaderboard from Fork this year, from Lake Fork, I'm breaking 100 pounds, and from the St. Lawrence. It's eerily similar that it took 91 to 92 pounds to be 10th place. It took 98 pounds to be in the top six. What an incredible two tournament stretch out of the last three events we've had. And also, Tommy, when we think about it, the St. Lawrence River in Lake Ontario, we've seen this place a lot, but it's always a little bit different. What a cool week for that, uh, for this body of water to kind of celebrate it. It's always been in our top five places of all time to go and visit and hold an Elite Series contest out there. And th this record breaking performance this time around only solidifies, moves it up closer to the top. And I have to tell uh, the truth on us a little bit. I have to tattle on us a little. In the live well, you asked me if 20 pounds <laughs> around that would make the would be the mark you know after three days if you had 60 pounds could you make the top 10 with that and I said man more times than not you're going to be pretty close to the top 10 with 60 pounds after three days guess what it was this week Tommy no 43rd place it took 20 pounds a day to get 43rd that is almost our entire day three field making 20 pounds a day what an, an impressive week to do it in July as well we've seen big weights in September but to do it in July where fish are on the on the bed fish are off the bed post spawn skinny than normal. I can't imagine if they were fully filled up with four days of perfect weather. I don't know if we'll ever see four days with less than five miles an hour wind ever again on this body of water. A couple of things we learned. Of course, Pickwick doesn't get enough respect. I we know. learned that because all of these record shattering performances here, some of them have uh, roots back in Pickwick Lake. But number one headline, St. Lawrence just unbelievable in 2022.